Good evening and welcome to this evening's episode of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamantunga Kumalo. Of course, this is episode 16 and we have made it through to Monday on day 38 of the national lockdown. And this evening we'll be talking about the pros and cons of renting versus buying. It's such a contentious one with some people saying you shouldn't be renting because you're paying somebody else's bond. And with others saying maybe buying might not be the best option um, depending on what your circumstances are. But to help us unpack this, I'm joined by Yaku Hobla, who is the Managing Director of Prosperity Enterprise. Thank you so much for joining us again, Yaku. Thank you very much. It's great to join you all tonight. I and mean, so I mean, this, is, this is one of those very contentious conversations, you know, because so many different people have different opinions around what should you be doing or what you shouldn't be doing. Um, and even looking at, you know, the long term effects of home ownership, whether you actually get to make money or you're losing money, especially when you look at the different costs associated with home ownership. So I think for our viewers at home, I'd like us to unpack, you know, what are some of the pros and cons of renting as well as buying just to help them make Make this decision. I mean, I know some of them are already looking for a property to buy and they're going on to privateproperty.co.za. Some of them are potentially looking for a new apartment to move into as uh, soon as we're able to actually move after this lockdown. And maybe they're just wanting to, you know, get a better sense of which one of the two might work for them and how they can best maximize whatever money they ha- they might have left if, for example, they choose to, um, to rent instead of buying and maybe then yaku you we can perhaps maybe let's start with renting because i think that's the one that um gets the biggest um you know schlep or uh backlash and people kind of downing it a little bit if we're going to just look at some of the advantages you know of renting before we even look at the disadvantages perhaps let's look at some of the advantages to um to renting to help our viewers at home and um, understand why sometimes it might actually be better to rent instead of buying Right. Thanks, Amantugwa. Um, it's, let's, let's start with renting then. I think I, I'm very excited to jump straight into buying and talking about the advantages of buying, but there's definitely advantages in renting as well. Um, and as we start answering um, that question and the question that people have around that, something that I just want to point out um, that, that is so, so important to keep in mind is that Acquiring a property or or the home that you live in is one of the biggest emotional decisions that you make. And so often our emotions get entangled with our rationale when we need to make this decision. Mm -hmm. And because of that, often we are not thinking clearly when we make this decision. So I hope that with tonight's discussion, we are actually going to be able to discuss that a bit and um, to put some pointers out there of things that you actually need to consider when looking at renting or buying. Now, Zamandungo, one thing that I want to start with, with straight away, um, which, which speaks about renting and the advantages of renting, is affordability. Yeah. Um, we live in a time and age when people are living above their means. Now, I absolutely hate telling people to lo- live below your means. You know, it, it's, such a, it's such, such a depressing statement to make. There's nothing fun about that statement. But at the end of the day, that is what responsibility is about. And it doesn't matter how much or how little money you have, you're never going to escape this, this statement. You are always going to have to live below your means. Now, um, I'm sure many of our listeners and viewers um, are very ambitious and they want to build wealth and, and they want to um, not just own a property to live in, but maybe build an investment portfolio. But the, the true fact is, that statement is still going to apply to you. After you are a multimillionaire, after you are a billionaire, that statement is still going to apply to you. You need to live below your means and you need to um, have a lifestyle that you can actually afford. Now, one of the great advantages of renting is that, well, you can rent above your means as well. You know, that you, it doesn't set you free from that. But the big mistakes I'm doing well, that so many, so many people make is They buy property, they spend too much on it, and then they convince themselves by by saying, but it's an investment. And that is the biggest mistake that you can make. And and, and so often in this, we combine the the two. Now, we're going to speak about the combination of, of, of the two points, having a home and the lifestyle side of it and having an investment. You know, a home can definitely be an investment as well. But 
so often that gets used as an excuse to live above your means. Because now, and I see it very often with my clients as well, they go and buy a home that is so expensive and they justified it by saying that, you know, it's, it's, it's an investment, so it's fine. But actually all they are doing is they are overspending on their lifestyle. Yeah. You know, so, um, a, a great advantage um, for me with, with renting is, is a lot of points around affordability, yeah. usually less cash outflow and the flexibility that it gives as well. You know, um, not everybody knows where they want to, to live. You know, imagine you move to a new city. You don't just want to buy in the first suburb that, that you think is a nice suburb to live in. Uh, renting creates a great opportunity to give you the flexibility of trying an area out, seeing how it is, and, and also it enables you to make moves or shifts if something happens, for example, with your personal finances. It's much easier to, to um, get out of a rental, obviously with the, with, with the requirements and that which needs to be done, but then getting rid of a property or selling a property. Um, so, so the flexibility that renting gives you is one of the advantages that, 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 that um, one has with renting. And, you know, Yaku, so flexibility is one. The first one that you had mentioned is affordability. I actually want us to, to, to make a, a point on this issue of affordability. You mentioned it in passing that you're able to essentially even rent uh, perhaps either above your means or rent something that's slightly more expensive. Um, and I think what perhaps some viewers at home might not realize is that part of affordability when it comes to renting is that, you know, you might find, let's say, an apartment. I was actually doing um, a quick search on this. You might find, let's say, an apartment in the Santin CBD area that's going for sale and could easily be a one bed for 1.5. And rental for the same apartment could easily, for example, be 10,000 rands. So you're finding that if you had to get a bond for it, you'd essentially be paying substantially more for the same place um, and paying less rent. And we're not even looking at the other associated costs, of course, because if, you're, if you've bought the place, you're also going to be paying for the levies, um, Perhaps you might have, you know, insurance on top of that. Whereas when you're renting, you're simply paying your rental um, and water and electricity. So I think that's probably one of the big things to understand when we look at affordability when it comes to renting out that property. That it isn't just about, you know, living above or below your means, but it's also understanding that you could actually use, we'll say, that access money as a way to potentially either pay off other debts if you're in debt or maybe even you know save up for a deposit um, in the event where you actually want to to buy a property i think that big affordability one is actually quite an important one to understand that as much as some people might convince you that renting out that santon apartment or whatever you know you're paying for somebody else's bond when you sit down and actually do your own finances you're easily able to recognize that it's not so much that you're paying for somebody else's bond, but you yourself actually also, um, you know, take, spending less money than what you would have spent had you actually bought that place. So we've got affordability, Yaku, we've got flexibility. What's another advantage um, of actually renting out? So as, as I said, and I, I, I suppose that all falls under, that all falls under flexibility, but, um, it is, it is, I think, an important point, and, 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 or actually with affordability, but, but, but I'd, I'd like to differentiate between affordability and cash flow. Um, okay. There's an old saying that says cash is king. And um, you want to be sure, irrespective of where you are at, whether it is, uh, whether you uh, are an employee or an employer, a business owner, whether you're an investor or not, it is important that you are in a healthy cash situation. Now, if renting can help you to improve your cash flow and your cash reserves, it might make sense for some time to do that because the big, a big mistake that a lot of people make is they spread themselves too thin, not just with affordability, uh, but also from a cash flow perspective. They've got no reserves that if something unexpected happens or if, if, if something happens where they suddenly need money, They've got no emergency fund. They've got nothing bolt up. And, and also with a property, because with a property, now don't get me wrong, a property is a great investment. And I am much more pro buying a property than renting a property. 
although in certain instances, and, and I'd love to discuss that in, in a little bit detail today, um, it makes more sense to buy. But then there's the other side of the coin as well. Sometimes the type of property that you would like to rent is not necessarily a good investment property. So you even get property investors that rent to where they live. So you would, you would find somebody that owns a lot of small properties or a lot of investment properties, but the property that they live in, they ask themselves the question, but does the cash flow? And it's exactly that example you use. You've got a movement. Does it make sense to buy here if I can rent? I've, I've once sat with a client and we've worked out if he rented the property that he lived in and he used the cash flow that he had of that properties, he could buy something like five or 10 investment properties. And I asked him the question, so what would you rather have? Have the one property that you own and it's yours or still have that same lifestyle. You still live there, but you have five or 10 investment properties and, and the cash flow is exactly the same. So another advantage for me of renting um, is that you can actually use the cash that you make available for other investments. And I want to say other property investors. Um, we are, are on the uh, private property show, so I'm uh, yeah. allowed to be very, um, uh, um, very subjective or very pro property. But yeah. um, it's not just about being subjective. It's actually that we really believe um, that there is so much opportunity and so much ability to, to bold wealth and financial freedom through investing in property. And that is also a, um, an important thing to, to keep in mind is the cash flow that it makes available to make better investment property uh, or, or acquire better investment properties. And of course, then, Jakob, perhaps uh, another advantage um, is around maintenance, right? So if you're renting out, you typically don't have to cover those costs. I mean, even if something were to go wrong in the apartment, suppose a geezer bursts, you're not, the, as a tenant, that isn't something that you'd be responsible to pay for. It's only in the event where you damage something in that property, they need to actually be responsible for ensuring that it's fixed um, before you move out. But the burden, of course, of a lot of the maintenance or the fixtures of a property typically lie with the landlord. So if you're a tenant, that isn't something you'd usually have to worry about. It's, it's very convenient. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, it, it's, it's, it almost sounds like you say, you know, you can shift the responsibility and you can. Um, and maybe that, that also adds on to the flexibility that you have, the ability to, you, you know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't affect you that much. You just pick up the phone, you phone the landlord and it, it gets prepared for you. But all of those, uh, I, I, I don't know if I should call it headaches because it doesn't have to be headaches, but all of those headaches that we are speaking about is also the reason why property could be a great investment to buy rather than to rent because um, you've, you've used the example and, and it's very accurate, you know, buying a property and actually seeing the difference between the bond payment that you're going to pay that is so much more versus the rent. But then there are a lot of our viewers or listeners tonight, if, if, if they look at the type of property that they want to acquire, also making sure that it is within their means and it is actually a property that they can afford to acquire, very often that, that those two numbers get very close to one another as well, where your rental payment and your bond payment is actually very close to one another. It depends yeah. on the type of property that you rent. And in such an instance, for me, it makes so much more sense to, 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 to acquire the property rather, to buy the property rather than to pay rent. And then I agree with those saying that, why would you want to pay off, some, pay off somebody else's bond if you could pay almost the same amount or maybe a thousand rand more and you can actually start paying off your, your own property? Before we move on to, you know, looking at the, the buying side, and I know you're itching for that because that's, uh, something, yeah. that you, <laughs> that's something that you advocate for quite a lot, Yaku. Perhaps let's, you know, touch on maybe the top two, even the top three disadvantages 
of renting that aren't particularly linked to some of the uh, points that we're going to be discussing with the benefits um, or the advantages of buying. Um, so, you know, what are some of the disadvantages where you'd be like, mm, maybe not uh, in terms of renting? I mean, we've already touched on on some of them, but perhaps before we, we make that leap to now just exploring uh, buying, because I know that that's your favorite topic. Uh, perhaps let's wrap this one around, you know, renting and perhaps the downside of renting. I think, I think a lot of the disadvantages of renting will be discussed in advantages of, of buying as well. But um, let's, let's look at a couple of them. I think number one is it is yet another expense on, on your personal finances that is not building anything for you. Now, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people need a little bit of help to take responsibility. All of us in certain areas, you know, need something that can keep us accountable. Now, with, with a rental payment, that payment, that payment goes every month. And except for the month that we live in that property, we've got nothing to show for it, you know? So, um, it's like eating out. It's very nice in the moment, but after you've after you've eaten, it's finished. You know. You know what? So, uh, cousin, your mother makes a joke about this. You know, she'll say you'll go out, uh, you'll go out to your friends, and you go to fancy restaurants, and you end up having quite a big bill that you'll split. But the moment you get home, you usually have another meal. So even if you get home at <laughs> nine o'clock. Even though you ate a three-course meal, you know, in the late evening, in the late afternoon, you get home and you still dish up something for yourself. So it's almost <laughs> as though even that wasn't enough. There's still another cost that you're essentially putting in. Oh, no, absolutely. But, and, and then also, you know, maybe this is a little bit of a more controversial one. Yeah. But who of you actually likes being told what to do? You know, I, I know for myself, I'm not, I'm not very fond of being told what to do, you know, yeah. and, and when you are renting from somebody else, it's their rules, yeah. you know, yes, they need to respect your privacy and, 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 but I don't like asking permission for things. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that <laughs> on live, on air, but I don't like asking permission for things, you know, and when you, when you are renting, it's like, you, you know, there's a lot more things that you need to ask permission for. And you can't drill any wall. You must ask if you want to put something, you must ask for permission. And typically a lot of landlords would actually just say no, because if all their tenants kept drilling and drilling, then you know, their walls are going to be damaged. So those are some of the things that are probably, uh, you know, a schlep, uh, especially for people who, like yourself, don't want to ask for permission from people. Just before this break, we're looking at, you know, the pros and cons of renting. And, you know, we've exhausted them quite a bit. So some of them include flexibility and affordability. And with affordability, it isn't just about, uh, you know, how much you can save, but it's also the cash flow that you're potentially able to, you know, open up in the event where you choose to rent. And what you can also do with that cash flow, you know, easily opening up a bit of cash flow can open up opportunities for you to buy additional investment properties and of course, it's the advantages of not having to deal with maintenance. Then the downside, well, the downside, as you were saying, is that you have this monthly expense that isn't going towards building anything. And also somebody who's perhaps like you might not want to ask for permission uh, when they want to do any changes in their particular um, apartment. But now I'd actually like us to look at the buying. And I know that this is something that you, you, you're quite passionate about and you're quite a proponent of. Perhaps let's look at the benefits or the pros of buying uh, when we're looking at the buying versus renting debates. What are some of the advantages of actually going and taking that next step and buying yourself a property? Right. So I think one thing that, that, that is very, very important um, when we get to this point of the discussion, as we said in the beginning, um, of, of, of this evening's um, interview as well is the fact that it is, it is so important to differentiate between investment and lifestyle. Sometimes you are going to be able to put the two together, but you still need to see it. I almost want to say as two separate transactions. Mm -hmm. The one transaction is acquiring an investment property and the other transaction is let's call it renting from yourself. You know, and um, you actually renting one of your investment properties. Now, at this point, it is so important for the viewers to understand how returns on investment property works. Because if one doesn't understand that, often you will 
make an uninformed decision when it comes to buying a property and, 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 and looking at the advantages of buying a property. So in property, you have two returns. On the one side, you've got the capital growth. Now that is the, that is the value of the property appreciating every single year. And on the other side, you have rental income. Now, some of you might be quick to say, but hold on, you don't have rental income on this property because you can't rent it out. And that's absolutely false because you are renting it out. You're renting it out to yourself. If you didn't pay that rent to yourself, you would have had to pay it to somebody else. Mm. So you can see it as an expense in your books, which you would in any way have, and an income in the, the entity or in the, as from an investment property perspective, um, income that you're receiving. So you still have rental income and capital growth. So when looking at an investment property or looking at a home even and asking yourself, is this a good investment financially? And, and that's the first advantage I want to talk about is the financial advantages. We'll speak about the rest now. But financially, what is my return? Does this make sense for me to, 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 to make this investment? And then you have to look at, okay, we've got the appreciation of the property, we've got the capital growth, and we have the rental income. And you know what the beautiful thing is? Is that rental income, income actually increases every year. Some cycles, it increases faster than others. Now we are in a cycle where rent is increasing very slowly and has for some time. But then we may enter a cycle again where escalations are a little bit faster. And the same applies to capital growth. You have times when capital growth is slow, like we have seen the last couple of years, but then there are times where property grows at 30% in a year. Can you believe that? That you can actually see a 30% growth and, and there has been years in the past where you can see a 30% growth in one year in capital appreciation in a property. Now, you have, these high, you have these high years or high growth years and these very low growth years, and then you have an average. And when you look at the averages over the last 20 to 40 years on property, um, and uh, I mean, there's so much great data out there that, that, that supports the statement that I'm making now, is you are sitting with a very, very good capital growth. And what I often remind people to do is don't stay into the last three years, because usually when you make a property investment, it's not going to be for three years usually it would be for a longer term. If, if you want to make a short-term investment, then renting might be better for you, um, unless you timed it well and you were, let's call it lucky as well. But, but if, if you're planning to keep that property longer, um, I, I mean, looking at the 20 and the 40 year stats, you're looking at a year-on-year -year capital growth of about 10%. That's a very, very good return. And that's only half your return because then we haven't looked at the rental income yet, which, would have, which is the rent that you have to pay um, on your personal expenses wherever you want to live. Okay, so that's the financial um, advantages that has you know these different components as you're speaking about. You've got your um, you know your capital growth, you've got your appreciation, you've got your rental growth um, that goes with uh, the financial advantages. What are some of the advantages that you know people can look forward to in the event where they buy their first home? So. For me, and uh, I'm a property investor, so I often look at I often look at property from an investment perspective. Um, and and a lot of people want to try out property as an investment, but it's a very overwhelming it's a very overwhelming thing buying a property. Think about it. What's your biggest expense that you've ever made before purchasing a property? You know, I mean, you maybe spend a thousand rand a year. You spend two thousand rand a year. You buy yourself something of 10,000 Rand and you thought long and hard about it. Now you want to buy a property and boom, there you have to, there it's a million Rand price yeah. tag. You know, so the, the leap that you need to take from the, the, the type of transactions that you usually do to suddenly acquiring a home is a, is a huge commitment. And, and that can very often be overwhelming. And, that is just the first step of property investment. Then over and above that, you've got tenant administration, you've got property management, you've got, and, and, and for me, acquiring your first home as your first investment property is a great step into the investment space because you get to see the benefits of property without all the disadvantages. And I'm going to elaborate what I mean by that. So the first thing 
is you don't have to get a rental agent um, to manage that property for you because you are living in it yourself. I always joke and say, unless it's not possible for you to manage yourself and you need somebody <laughs> to vote by you. But uh, in that case, it's maybe also better to rather rent. But <laughs> now you've got, you've got the opportunity to own property and you've got, let's call it a better yield on that property because you pay the rent that you would have paid somewhere, somewhere else, but then you've got that additional amount that you can save by not paying a rental agent. So that's your first benefit. Then secondly, you don't have to worry about defaults. Now, there's a lot of things that you can do to, to manage defaults or to, to, to manage non-payment of tenants, but it's still something that sometimes happens. Sometimes tenants don't pay you. Sometimes you have to follow up, you have to phone for your money. Now, the beautiful thing when you, let's call it you rent from yourself, is that, that you don't have to- You're not to following up with yourself. And also because it's a debit order, the bank takes its money. So you don't even have to physically pay the amount. It, it, all that <laughs> stuff is already automated for you. So, so I'm talking about that's a great benefit for me. And, and then the third one, and that goes with a disadvantage of, of renting that we discussed just before this, is the fact that you can actually make changes to that property. And the beauty of it is the changes that you make can actually be just as much of an investment than what it is an, ex an expense. Let me give you a couple of examples. If you, for example, put air conditioning into your property and you later move out and you want to put tenants in, it may be that you can earn a better rental because of the fact that you've got air conditioning in your property. Or it may be that you making improvements and beautifying the property that it actually increases, increases the capital value or, the, or that, it, that it brings appreciation to the property whilst you enjoy the benefit of it. So, so for me, there's a, a double benefit in that regard. You can invest in the property, you can improve the property, and it's, it's not water flushed down the toilet. It's actually, it actually adds, let's say it adds to your balance sheet. It actually adds value or could add value. Let me rather say that to your property. And that's a, that's a nice benefit for me. And, and before we actually just go to some of the questions and comments from our viewers at home, remember, if you've got any questions or comments, do send them and we will address them um, in just a bit. I think the last one, Yaku, that I would probably add is that when you're, you're, when you're buying, you're essentially also paying to eventually get equity into a property. So all those months of paying, I mean, I know the first few years of you paying that bond, you're paying you know, the interest component. So you don't really see yourself, you don't see the equity component. So depending on whether you, have, you were able to put down a big deposit and as the years kind of progress, you're slowly building equity into that, um, you know, into that house that you might be able to utilize you know, in later years, perhaps uh, you know, buy another property, perhaps even refinance that one. Whereas if you were, say, if you were renting for say, say seven to 10 years, that money is just gone. You know, there's no way of tapping into it. There's no way of trying to access it to unlock other potential investment properties that you might want to uh, purchase in the future. And I think that's probably one that we don't actually think about, especially in the early years. I mean, when you're paying that bond in the first few years, you're hardly seeing a move when you look at that statement. You know, it seems as though you're like pouring water into a well and you don't really see uh, the work that you're putting in. But as the years slowly progress, you're actually able to see that, at, you know, even if I added that extra 500 or extra 800 rand, it actually does make a difference and go quite a long way. Um, you know, in helping you not only pay off that bond facility faster, but also build up a bit of equity um, in that bond facility. Now, Yaku, we've got a few, you know, questions and comments uh, from our viewers at home. One of them comes from Stephanie Love Whitboy, who asks, what are the pros and cons of purchasing a property cash? Because I think a lot of the examples, certainly with um, purchasing a property, we've been looking at bonded properties. So what are the, what are the, I think, perks or the downsides of doing it cash. I've heard different variations of this. I'd actually be glad to, to hear what your view on this one is, especially as an investor, because I hear a lot of investors saying, you know, take as many bond facilities as the bank is willing to extend to you. Don't put down too much money on each respective property. Uh, but if you do have that 1 million rand cash, is it advisable to just buy it cash? You don't have to deal with the bank and paying bonds and those kind of expenses. 
great question. Very, very, very good question. And I'm glad we are addressing this tonight. Uh, the first thing that I want to say is that it, it, it very, and, and you know, we, we discussed this previously as well. It, it very much depends on your plan and what it is that you want to achieve. Um, the, the first thing that you need to ask yourself, and I mean, this is, this is a financial question, but it's not just a financial question. That's with everything in life is where would you like to go? Where would you like to end up? What kind of life would you like to live? And once you've set that goal, you can start asking yourself, but what do I need to do to get there? Now, there's, 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 there's something about being debt-free in your personal capacity. There's a, there's a burden or a stress that is lifted from your shoulders when you can live in a property and you know that property is paid off cash. You know, so I, I'd like to start with the advantages of buying a property cash. You know, um, I, I think from a psychological perspective and from an emotional perspective, it's, it's, a, it's a great it's a great um, place to be to know that even if you lose your job, even if you don't have income, you don't have this bond that you need to keep on paying, your personal life is taken care of. Um, what's also great about that is depending on, on where you are at, what else have you got to do with the money that you would like to invest in property? Because, um, if you give it to a skilled property investor, yes, they might be acquire a number of discounted properties and bond everything and throw that, that cash into the reserves and with that million rand, maybe buy 10 properties instead of one properties, but you need a certain amount of skill to do that as well. Otherwise, you're going to burn your fingers. So again, the question is, where are you at? Because when you are not at a place where you can do that and you don't have a better place to, to maybe put that million rand, it could be a great place to, to put it there. Again, speaking about your return, what would your return be? You would have had to pay rent somewhere. So your rental income would have been your one side of your return. And the other side of your return would have been the capital growth or the capital appreciation of that property. And if you add those two together, you actually get a pretty good return even on a cash investment. If you compare it to, to, to similar investments, also looking at the, at, at the low risk, of, of making a cash investment in property. So you, you still have a good return, but then I want to say the disadvantage of it is you miss out on one of the greatest advantages of property investment and that's leverage. And um, the fact that you can with leverage do much more than what that, what you have in your hand, you, you know, the, the, the simple, illustration of leverage is being able to acquire a million rand property with 40,000 rand of your own money for transfer costs. If you got a hundred percent, if you or let's say 50,000 rand in costs, if you had a million rand property that you were acquiring. So being able to make a million rand investment and only using 50,000 rand of your own money, if that investment does well, it can create so much wealth for you. So the big disadvantage for me, of buying a property cash is that you miss out on the leverage opportunity where you can do so much more with that same amount of money. And, and I think it's something that perhaps, you know, some people might not think about, or as you were saying, it really does depend on where you are on your journey. And perhaps some people are not trying to have 10, 20 or more investment properties. Cause I always say sometimes, you know, some people just want the home that they're staying in, maybe one or two additional you know, apartments and that's it. They're not trying to build a big property portfolio. Perhaps they are spreading their investments across other asset classes and property to them is not the biggest share of their investment portfolio. So really understanding where you are as you know, somebody who's got that cash on hand and, and whether, whether you choose to, to acquire property with it or perhaps you know, opt to invest it in, 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 in other vehicles, understanding where you are and what your investment strategy is, is probably able to help you the most um, in trying to decide what we can um, do with, 
the what you can potentially do with that um, additional money. I do see some of your questions um, coming into our viewers at home. Uh, Bruno has asked a, a really good question. Um, I'll pose it to you, uh, yeah, it isn't quite what we're talking about, but I know that you, you're actually able to, to answer this one. Some of the other questions, um, and I'm glad that they're preemptively being asked. Some of them we actually will be dealing with, uh, with them during the course of the week. And before we wrap up, I'll actually let you know some of the topics that we'll be dealing with later on in this week so that you are uh, you diarize it and you tune in and you can ask our expert guests those specific questions so this question um yeah, is coming from bruno de santos who's asked good evening guys i have two properties bonded they are in my name would it be better would it be a better idea to put them as a business or a company that's also a, a very good question and we're definitely gonna need an additional session to, to yeah. speak about in detail but um, if I may, I would like to give a summary on that, that to speak about it. And we touched on it previously as well, where we said that if you are looking at building your property investment portfolio, now that could be slowly but surely growing those two properties to maybe three or four or five properties as time goes by, or maybe aggressively building it into a more, a, 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 let's call it a property empire. Structuring becomes more important. You, you, the, the example we used last time is uh, where we said that um, buying investment property in your own name is like running a business through your savings account. You know, it will work for the first couple of months, but as that business starts to grow, the lack of control, the lack of being able to get financing or funding to expand further in the business starts to limit you very much. And where you start needing the structure that an uh, entity such as a company or a trust can give you, and the financial statements of those entities to maybe get funding or financing where that becomes more and more important. So um, I think without going into too much detail, because it is something that we will cover in more detail at some point, is that if you want to build a property portfolio, you have to look at structuring. It's not something that you can build in your own name. And also that being said, um, often by restructuring your property portfolio and maybe moving the properties to an entity, it also creates an opportunity not just to get your structure right, but also to get capital available. Because by moving it into a company or into a trust, it may be that you take new bonds at market value and make a lot of cash available that you can use to invest further. Now, this is some of the little bit more advanced techniques of investment that we speak about where you need the skill and where you need to know what you are doing in property investment to make sure that you don't burn your fingers, but also where it creates a lot of opportunity for you to, to bolt your property portfolio further. You know, Yaku, I think that's actually where we're going to leave it for this evening. And I did say um, that we're definitely going to have you back to talk about structuring and perhaps even later uh, on leveraging. It is one of those burning questions that our viewers at home actually want to know. And it's one of those things that you need to speak to somebody who's actually done it a couple of times, um, who can help us understand what is the best way. I think some of us, when we started on our property journey, you know, we had a lot of our properties in our names and the, our interest in property grew and now we're essentially wanting to know how do we make sure that we run it like a business and when you talk about running your portfolio like a business what does that actually mean so beyond uh, making sure that they're you know they're under a pty or perhaps even a trust what does that mean on a Monday evening, you know, when you're saying you're running your portfolio like a business, I think those are some of the things that perhaps our viewers at home need help with uh, in order to make sure that for those who want to start on their property journey, perhaps this year or maybe in the coming months, they're best equipped to be able to make um, those decisions. So thank you very much to our viewers at home. See you with the audience saying thank you for this much needed um, information. And we really do uh, hope that you can send more of your questions and comments. So in the event where there's certain topics that you'd like to you'd like us to speak to, do send them through. Like I said, Dural, we saw your question. Um, Dural Jafta, Dural Jafta, rather, you've sent through some questions. Like I promised, we will be dealing with some of the questions that you've actually posed to us uh, later on in the week. Uh, so for example, in tomorrow's show, we're actually going to be looking at some of the secrets that estate agents want you to know you absolutely do not want to miss that one those are the five secrets every estate agent wants you to know 
on your property journey and buying your property. So do make sure that you tune in for tomorrow's show as well. Yaku, thank you very much for joining us this evening. To our viewers at home, do continue commenting um, on our Facebook page, inviting more of your friends to watch our subsequent um, episodes and this one as well. And of course, if you've got any buying, selling or rental needs, go to www.privateproperty.co.za and we'll be sure to you know, address some of those issues, concerns, and you'll also be able to read up on some of some, uh, read up rather on some of some uh, tips and tricks uh, to help you navigate your property journey. From myself, Zamando Wakumalo, it's been really great um, this evening. Yaku, thank you very much. And I hope to our viewers at home, you're staying home and you're staying safe. Good night.